Many of us enjoy being at the beach and being in the water on a nice hot day. This becomes a lot more uncomfortable in colder parts of the world, but proper cold weather gear like wetsuits make it easier and more comfortable to bear. But how do wetsuits actually work? We'll take a look at that in today's episode. Let's first take a look at what happens if we are swimming and not wearing a wetsuit. We'll use an example of really cold water of 5 degrees Celsius. But keep in mind that most oceans and lakes can remain around 20 degrees or lower even in summer, which is still a lot colder than our normal body temperature of around 37 degrees Celsius. The rate of heat loss from the body depends on the difference in temperature between our body and the environment. Water also sucks away heat much faster than air does, which explains why 20 degrees Celsius air is pretty comfortable but 20 degrees Celsius water can lead to hypothermia if we stay in for too long. So if we're in 5 degrees Celsius water, the heat from our body warms up that water right next to our skin, let's say to 35 degrees Celsius. So now the temperature difference between our body and the environment isn't as much, so the rate of heat loss slows down. However, normal water movements or currents quickly removes that water from next to our skin, and that warmed water that was at 35 degrees Celsius becomes replaced by new water at 5 degrees Celsius, which again needs to be heated up by the body. You can see how this becomes a negative spiral, with our constantly having to reheat cold water with the heat from our bodies. That's where wetsuits come in. You're putting a barrier to movement between you and the water. Cold water still leaks into the suit just like before, except not as quickly. You'll again heat that water up with your body to 35 degrees Celsius. However, the wetsuit traps that water next to your skin and doesn't let it leak out as fast. So the net result is this cycle of continuously heating the water and then losing it to the environment still happens with a wetsuit, but it doesn't happen nearly as quickly. The speed of this water cycle depends on the thickness of the wetsuit. The thicker the wetsuit, the slower this water cycle of heating and leaking, so the warmer it becomes. Actually, the exact same principle is applied to cold weather clothing like jackets or sleeping bags. Insulation in these pieces of gear all depend on trapping air around our bodies after we warm that air up. Indeed, the effectiveness of those pieces of gear gets completely ruined if the insulation becomes wet, because then those air pockets disappear. We'll talk more about clothing design in other episodes. I hope that you have enjoyed this peek into the fascinating world of environmental physiology. I'm Stephen Chung, and I run the Environmental Ergonomics Lab at Brock University in Canada. If you like this, please subscribe to the channel and check out our other short science episodes. If you want more detailed environmental physiology seminars, please check out our virtual environmental ergonomics series. Thanks for watching and see you next time.